Hey, Jacqueline here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk about the iPhone SE 2. Now, the iPhone SE, when it came out in 2016, kind of took the market by storm. It was a compact phone, which we were in desperate need of, at a pretty good price, which is not that common for Apple, and it sold like crazy. And then there was kind of radio silence. Phones continued to get larger and more expensive, and companies that were making the flagship killers transitioned into making flagships. A review of the OnePlus 8 Pro coming soon. And then Apple, they came out with the iPhone SE 2 like very, very recently, depending on when you're watching this video. And it's gonna probably take the market by storm again. You can have me on the record for that. And that's because it's a good phone at $399, so people can get invested into the Apple ecosystem without spending a ton of money. Today's video, I wanna talk about what I think the iPhone SE 2 is gonna do really well, who I think it's for, and be sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to, of course, have a full review of the iPhone SE 2 and other coverage. has pretty thick bezels. It actually kind of looks like a flagship from a few years ago. And to someone like you or me, like the tech enthusiast, this is kind of bothersome. We like the bezel-less look, but I think that this is actually really good for the general consumer. It's kind of a comforting, familiar design, especially if they're expecting people to upgrade from the iPhone 6, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8. There's not really gonna be any learning curve. They're not gonna have to learn new swipe controls or get used to Face ID. They still have the home button and they have Touch ID. And that kind of makes it a perfect device for someone's grandma. If they have an older iPhone, they can upgrade to this without having to be confused and call you a bunch of times. So that's kind of a good thing. And I honestly don't think that the design is terrible. Obviously it's not innovative and it looks a lot worse than a lot of other flagships coming out right now, but it works. And I actually like Touch ID better than Face ID. So that's a little bit of a benefit. This phone is also pretty compact with a 4.7 inch display. So for people that are in need of a compact phone, this phone is kind of supplying that. Uh, and it also kind of packs this older familiar design with newer internals. So you don't need to buy an iPhone 8 if you want the home button. You can buy this and it packs the same processor as the iPhone 11 Pro with the A13 chip. So it should be pretty fast. That is exciting as well. The phone also has 4K video and portrait mode for people. Obviously the sensor is not gonna be as excellent as the iPhone 11 Pro. There's gonna be a huge difference, but it is packing some of the software based technology. So it still should be a pretty good camera setup and I'm really excited to test it. So definitely like this video if you wanna see a video testing out the camera. The phone also is gonna have 18 watt fast charging available, which can get the phone from zero to 50% in 30 minutes. And you might be thinking, that's really fast for 18 watt. It's because the battery on this phone is still pretty small. So I'm hoping that the battery life is gonna be pretty good, but I'm not expecting an incredible battery life. Obviously, I'll keep you posted in the full review. That's like mainly my initial thoughts. I think that the iPhone SE 2 is kind of filling this place in the market for people that are either interested in Apple and they wanna get a phone, but they don't have a huge budget, or they're interested in a compact phone and they don't wanna leave the Apple ecosystem to go to something like the Pixel lineup or some of the phones that Samsung offers. I'm excited about it though. I think for $399, it's a really good deal. And I think it's really interesting that OnePlus came out with a phone that was extremely expensive and they're normally inexpensive. And then the next day, Apple came up with a phone that is pretty inexpensive. So I'm excited to test it. I know that it's been getting mixed feedback online. I think that's mainly because of the design and the screen resolution. But I know that on the iPhone 8, the screen looked pretty good and the colors and the brightness are really good, even if the pixel density isn't amazing. So I'm really excited to look at it. I don't think it's for you necessarily, but I do think it's for the general consumer, your grandma, or someone that's just looking to dive into the Apple ecosystem and not spend $1,000. So stay tuned for my full coverage on it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope you're staying safe. I'll see you soon. Bye.